Christian faith, uh, and I hold those things quite dearly to myself. Um, but I think these schools do play uh, an exceptional role in holding those traditional values intact for the next generation. Because it doesn't matter where you live or what era you live in, I think there are basic truths that remain the same throughout all time and all eternity. And so I think, you know, I want to congratulate all of you who have been involved, past and present, in establishing this school. Another thing I want to share with you is that New Zealand is becoming a very diverse country culturally, um, in so many different ways, language, etc. Some of the people who claim New Zealand as theirs have a difficulty understanding and accepting their cultural diversity. And part of the role of, uh, of people who are blessed with different languages, are blessed with uh, different faiths, is to help overcome those prejudices, if you like, to help them better understand it. So these open houses, or this open days such as this, helps break down those barriers. And so I, I would encourage you, if this is the second open day of the school, have some more uh, in the years to come. And I know that, uh, but these are very, very important in just breaking down barriers for those who may not necessarily understand the differences in culture, the differences in language, and the differences in protocol. Uh, the other point I'd like to say is, I read report after report that comes through my desk, and I keep track of what is happening with the population of New Zealand, because I want to see whether there are jobs being created, etc. But I notice that, um, that in more recent reports about our population, is that the older white people, in no disrespect, are growing older and dying. And then there's this younger population, which are more brown, more mixed, that are predominantly young. And so, when you consider these two factors, you have to then accept that there is a greater role that your children and my children will play in the future in terms of the future of this country. And so, I just say to the parents, I say to the young women, um, have big dreams about what you want to contribute to this country. Have dreams about what your place is in this country. I challenge some of our young kids, including my nieces and nephews, who think sometimes that I overdo my speaking. I challenge them and says, Dream beyond what you think you're capable of. Um, you know, there are some issues in this world such as how do we bring, how do we stop war in the war-torn parts of the world? How do we bring peace to those parts of the world? How do we solve poverty and ensure that no one goes without the necessaries of life? How do we protect our environment to ensure that the next generation is able to enjoy the kind of surrounding, natural surroundings that we enjoy today. And then there are others. How do we make sure um, that everybody grows old, healthy and strong, and that some of the illnesses that we constantly have to face, that we find the cures for those things? So it is about trying to see, can you stretch your thinking far enough that you can believe you can do those things? And here's another one that will help you stretch your thinking. Has any one of the young women here began, began to dream about becoming the mayor of Auckland? Has anybody dreamed about becoming the prime minister of New Zealand? It may seem so far away, but I tell you, as one of the few Pacific MPs, uh, members of parliament, this is a dream that we had some years ago in 1980s. But we believe that once you have somebody in there, the door becomes open to others. And so the door has opened up in terms of the role and the place that we, as people of different colours, different languages, different beliefs, have to play in Aotearoa New Zealand. My friend 
Ashraf uh, Chaudhry, the first Muslim member of parliament in Aotearoa, New Zealand. Now, I don't want, he's retired now, but I've said to him, you need to identify other young people to come through the ranks. So I just sort of put that on the table for uh, young women here to consider, <coughs> that's for parents to consider, because I think we've left our countries, uh, we've moved here, we live here, we bury our elderly, beloved elderly here, we have children who are born here, so this is now our home. And if it is our home, then we need to then begin to think about what contribution do we make to make this place a much better place for all of us. So I just leave that for you to consider, but I leave also that as a challenge to the young women to start thinking about the future and their place in the future. I always tell my children, and I challenge them sometimes, do you see yourself becoming Prime Minister of New Zealand? Do you see yourself becoming a big business person for this country? Or the mayor of this country? And sometimes they say yes, sometimes they say no. <laughs> and that's just natural. But I think we've got to keep putting those dreams in front of our young people for the future. Finally, if you ever have the opportunity, I will invite uh, the girls to come down the park experience for yourself where, uh, what parliamentarians do, because in that place they are making decisions which affect all of our lives. And they make decisions sometimes where we don't have any control of them. So come down there, have a look at it, and I'd be happy to host a group of girls who come down to that place, as I do with some of these other schools. Anyway, have a good day. Uh, God bless everybody. We'll see you again.